It's a nice night to talk about slippery pegs, but first, I can't stop playing this. That's what's so nice about having a violin that you really like. So you bought this violin from Amazon, which I wouldn't really recommend. I'd say, suck it up, McGee. Spend the $350 to $500 on a violin from Shar Instruments or the Fiddle Shop. One that has seen the hands of a setup person between the factory and you. Um, but not everyone can do that. I... I I feel you. I've, I've been there. And so you get, say, a violin that hasn't been set up, nicely done bridge, sound post, placed correctly and all that. But the one thing, complex, complex, somewhat complex, is getting a peg so they work, so they hold tune and they're not sticky and you know, really hard to manage. So you can get down to just one fine tuner on that upper string. There's a couple situations. Well, let's talk about three. The first one is, do I have it in here? I do. Look at this. Is that you go to a YouTube video and you look closely when you're saying, I'm reviewing this $130. I'm reviewing this $62. I'm reviewing this $80 violin and they show it to you and nobody seems to notice this even the people doing the reviews but you see how these pegs stick all the way through the sound box and they're basically nice and even look carefully at the peg box of one of these cheap amazon violins and you'll notice dollars the donuts that they don't go all the way through that you see the end in inset into the peg box and you see that white wood of that inner hole this is so this is such a careful process because you you take the peg reamer and you put one turn extra or a little bit extra pressure than you need and suddenly the hole is too big and the peg goes all the way through so if you are going to do that the peg reamer be very careful. I'm not going to get into fitting brand new pegs where you use the peg shaver and a little bit of sandpaper in the peg ring. I'm not going to get into that. That's a little beyond um, the scope of this. But, you know, it's easy to take on a cheap violin being very careful because the tapers are generally about the same. You know, this taper is the same as the peg on that cheap violin. You can get it so it goes all the way through. Now you're at the next step. When, in fact... You have done that you might get a peg that it, it sticks it sticks like a son of a gun that's where you can get and this is so uh, if you have too much on or it makes the peg slip too much what have you you can always correct it with a little bit of alcohol just on the peg not getting alcohol on your peg box whatsoever because generally speaking maybe not on a cheap violin with a plastic finish but if you don't get alcohol anywhere near the varnish. It'll destroy it like instantly. But this peg soap, if you have a sticky peg on that cheap violin, you can put the peg soap on there and it might help a little bit. And this is not much of an investment. Peg soap, peg compound, whatever. Now the opposite, and I had the need for this on my cheap Mendini violin. I wound up using my reamer getting the pegs all the way through the sound box evenly so corrected that situation the g-string very sticky it doesn't move and it's hard to get it into the correct tuning a little bit of peg soap worked wonders the next is the pegs are slipping now this is cautionary because you might have slipping pegs on your violin and again it's always best to send it to somebody that knows what the heck they're doing but it could be a matter of humidity. I am extremely careful in the house. I have 
it's winter so I have a humidifier in here luckily my music room stays at about exactly 50% relative humidity so that's good I keep it up here boiling water on the stove I've got two humidity meters that I've checked and there's ways to check them wrap them in a damp towel and wait 20 minutes and you read it and it should be about a hundred percent YouTube videos on checking your humidity meter but being very careful because if it gets too dry the pegs are going to slip things like shrink if it gets too humid the pegs are going to stack so humidity is one thing but in the case of this send it to a violin maker put new pegs in it they might have been reused pegs G A the A peg this one right up here would not hold tune I'd get it up the tune and they would go yeah it would drop and I'm not going to take this and jam it in there because you risk cracking the peg head you don't want to have to like hit it with a mallet to keep tune so this is one thing you can do and again it's on you it's your violin look at other videos you know if you're timid or you don't have confidence send it to somebody that can do this but how I cured this one so I took the peg out and there's a limit to how many times you can take the peg out put it back in string it take the peg out string it with the same string before the silk on the end gets all ganked up or the winding comes off and it gets hard to stick it through that little hole I simply took my peg out and I wiped it with alcohol not all over it this isn't contact in the peg box so I didn't get alcohol up there but I wiped the shaft with alcohol and then very carefully not changing the diameter I'm sure I did on the micron scale 220 grit very carefully not reducing the roundness of it being ultimately very careful cleaned with alcohol a little bit of 220 very carefully put it back in there and now holds tune did it myself some things to think about and again let's say you wanted to do the bridge you, you very carefully tape a piece of very fine sandpaper I used a thousand grit tape it to the body and instead of free handing it or using a carving knife to fit it to the body I cheated and I bought one of these things there's a little wheel on here you clamp it to the bridge so it's at the right angle and this guides the bridge back and forth very very small mov movements to fit the feet down but bridges complex you can you tune them by removing wood here you get the right thickness at top the right everything that's complex and then if you're fiddling with the sound post and again don't do it on a thousand dollar instrument or your Stradivarius you know it's good to experiment on cheap ones this thing right here is what I use for setting sound posts and then this up here just kind of complex doink 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 getting it in the right the sweet spot which is typically and again there's videos on this when you look inside here and you see the sound post it's about the body thickness right here behind the bridge there should be a, a little bit of space between the sound post the sound post is back up in here I'm exaggerating behind the treble foot the treble foot now if you're making the sound post there's debate you know you ask a hundred violin makers and you'll get a hundred different responses and how it changes by see I'm going sideways now if it's this way or up here a little bit most people a lot of people say it doesn't give that much of a difference the critical distance is how far it of a space there is between the back of the the bridge foot and the front of the sound post and that distance starting point is equal to the thickness of that upper plate but then you can kind of cajole a little bit to um balance the strings give you more power or less power on the upper strings blah 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 it's it's its own science that's about it um when I took the old tail piece off I loosened all the strings obviously but I take this little leather thong and I wrap it really tightly up here so they don't get all screwed up here and it gives me enough leeway so the strings can loosen as soon as I took that tail piece off the 
tail I'm blanking here the little button popped out and then the sound post dropped and so I had to use this but I am so glad I got that I think I told you that before and I had to bounce this thing this way up a little bit away from the tailpiece because it's with the the relief there it's a little taller but whatever yep that's it I am very pleased with this fiddle I love the tone even with the I automatically loosen the hair on this thing every time I set it down but yeah that's it in some respects don't be afraid to learn how to work on your own violin that is the benefit of having that cheap Mendini MV300 that set you back about a hundred bucks there's a lot less fear factor the tone isn't that awesome to begin with so you're not gonna mess it up when you start getting into something like this you know don't just learn on that learn on a cheap one but that's it none of the stuff is out of the range of the average person given that they are somewhat crafty um, that's about it that's all have a good one thank you for watching